I get, I get so nervous, so many important people here. I want you guys to find me interesting. I want my boss to be proud. I want my mom to think I picked out a good outfit for TV, uh, which is the thing I'm most nervous about. Um, I'm the director of Food Safety and Sustainability for Mario Batali, Joe Bastianich, and Lydia Bastianich. Um, as far as changing the way we eat is concerned, from a restaurant perspective, I'll try to give you sort of a window from uh, the inside out. I often feel like representing Mario is sort of like representing the Shrek on the front of the package or, or you know, you hear of all these struggling, um, these, these stories about independent people doing amazing things, but what I think is amazing about the people that I work for is they, they are the Shrek and they are leading by example. The first restaurant we did green was Del Posto, which was our, our, at the time, this was about three years ago, was our newest restaurant. It had some of the green initiatives already built into the fiber of the restaurant, and we wanted to, to do it a little more controlled, do it a little more specifically. So we joined with the Green Restaurant Association. For the purposes of this talk, the only thing you really need to know about them is that they do require a minimum of 10 points in these categories, water, waste, food, energy, disposables, and chemicals. So you can't run your water all day, but say, we use energy efficient hand dryers, so we're a green restaurant. You really do have to sort of um, make sure you touch on everything. What I learned from that first walk through Del Posto is that really greening the dining experience or serving a more sustainable meal is, is there's so much more than what actually comes out on your plate, which is, ends up in front of you when you dine. There's so many things, the staff that works in the restaurant, the staff that serves you, the staff that cooks your food, and all of these other things, what kind of candles you use, the faucets that, you know, how much water they use, the aerators. We had a tremendous amount of paper at Del Posto, all different kinds of colors, highly stylized restaurant. You want to make sure that that's all 100% recycled. You can't always find the colors you want. One of the interesting things I learned about the staff and how important they are about that final sustainable product on your plate at the end of the day is that if, they, if you don't tell them why you're doing it or why they're doing it or what it's about, um, it won't work. And the perfect example is the dishwashers. We switched out our soap to eco-friendly detergents for the pot washing. And we were going through it at an alarming rate. I go over to the pot sink one day, and the guy's free pouring a five-gallon bucket into the sink. And I said, what's going on? He said, there's no suds. There's no, there's no bubbles. Oh, well, this kind of soap doesn't have that chemical or whatever that is that produces the bubbles and you don't need it. So you can't, I can't give you a sustainable meal or a greener meal or a greener experience if I don't tell my staff why I'm doing it. Composting, so much easier than we thought. I had a chef tell me, I can barely get the staff to not throw away the silverware. How am I going to possibly get them to, <laughs> to separate the organic matter? But there's something very intuitive. I mean, these things that I didn't think would be a challenge were a challenge and things that I didn't, people just understand if I can eat it, it goes in here. Uh, so this was an example of a success. To-go containers are the bane of my existence. Um, you know, what, what you eat is, also depends on how I give it to you, how it's delivered to you, how you take it home with you. Um, we've heard a lot today about biofuels and corn and things. I'm not preaching, I'm just saying that the decisions that go into whether I give you a plastic container that you can recycle or a compostable container that may be made of genetically modified corn or maybe should go, the corn should go to feed a human being. Plus, if I give it to you, New York City doesn't even compost municipally, so unless you have something in your backyard I don't know about, I don't know what you do with it, you throw it away. So these are all the things that go into these decisions. So what do we do from there? We expand it to our other restaurants. We now have 13 green, certified green restaurants. Mozu to Go was a restaurant that we built recently. It's our to-go pizza outfit in Los Angeles. And it was so much easier because we built it from the ground up. I could put so many things into the fiber of the restaurant. Um, Energy Star appliances, compact fluorescent lighting. This is an example of a lighting sensor that we have in all the bathrooms and all the small rooms. And then what? It gets really tiresome saying, we print on 100% recycled menu paper and we have energy efficient hand dryers. You know, it gets, it gets old. So we tried to get a little more creative. This is a good example of that. Um, between Ostri and Pizzeria Mozza, we built a green wall. It has edible herbs and, and greens on it. And obviously it does not supply the entire appetizer menu. Um, <laughs> they, but we do, it is a mini example of a closed loop. Herbs do come off this wall, they do go on your salad. And, and it's, it's a symbol in some ways. Education, I, I screened a, m a movie called End of the Line. I'm not selling from the stage, I'm just saying if you haven't seen it, it's amazing. Um, and I showed it to our chefs. We're a very chef-driven restaurant. I never tell them what they can and can't put on the menu. Uh, I give them suggestions, we talk about it, we have a dialogue. And End of the Line was a perfect way for them to make the decision themselves. And I wouldn't say we have more sustainable seafood on our menu now, but I would say we have less non-sustainable seafood on the menu now. And Meatless Monday, one of my favorite uh, initiatives that we did, because it's free and it's easy and it's uh, idiot-proof. Um, this is our personal Balit Batali Bastianich Meatless Monday logo, and this is the original logo. Um, everybody says to me, Mario Batali, the guy who was photographed with sausage around his neck, how was he possibly doing Meatless Monday? But he was also in Time Magazine with Kohlrabi on his head, and nobody ever remembers that. So I like to say... <laughs> 
He loves meat and vegetables equally. And if we all ate meat, you know, one fewer day a week, it'd be better for our bodies and better for the environment. And also, we're, we're sort of expanding out. We're, we're greening the Vegas Strip, we like to say. We, in our off-site facility, we created a small farmer's market. There are farmers in Nevada and Northern California. They come. The chefs from the Strip can come. Locals can come. And these guys do it in our off-site facility, which means every Thursday, they, the chefs themselves move all of our stuff out of the off-site facility, bring in the farmers, and then put it back in. So it really is a labor of love. Our next thing will be Orange County. Our Pizza Remotes Orange County will be a fully lead certified building, hopefully silver. Um, so that means the dining experience from you know, every aspect will be green. Some more sustainable seafood, which is a bee in my bonnet that I'd like the chefs to get more into. Some new composting equipment, this hood recovery system, hot water. Uh, more education, if any of you would like to come talk to my chefs. And this is my dog, Vespa, who listened to me re repeat this speech 50,000 times. <laughs> and while she wasn't sleeping, seemed to really enjoy it. So I thought she should get some credit. Thank you. <laughs>